What I have on the screen here is a model that relates four predictor latent variables with one criterion latent variable. If these were not latent variables, this could be uh, referred to as a multiple regression model. And uh, these various uh, predictor variables, they, their relationships with the main criterion variable, which is information overload, have been calculated through a method called PLS regression, which is one of the options provided by WARP PLS 1.0. PLS regression calculates uh, relationships between latent variables that are linear. So unlike WARP 2 and WARP 3 regression, it does not try to identify a nonlinear relationship between latent variables. The results uh, through this algorithm, PLS regression, are very, sim are very similar to the results generated by uh, the PLS path modeling algorithms that are implemented by other PLS-based software used for structural equation modeling. Now, I also calculated, and this stored in a different project, the path coefficients through warp 3 PLS regression. And they are, they are more, they're higher, and uh, there's more uh, significant. Uh, they, they are more significant. Now, the model estimates for any calculated structure equation model can be saved into a tab delimited text file through this option here. What I have on the screen now, what I have on the screen now are the model estimates saved on text files for, on the left, PLS regression, and on the right, WARP 3 PLS regression. These are uh, text files that I placed side by side here to show you the difference in the path coefficients uh, when one uses uh, warped PLS regression compared with linear PLS regression. One thing that stands out right away are the model fit indices. Uh, APC is average path co coefficient, ARS is the average R squared, and AVIF is the average variance inflation factor. So as you can see, all of the numbers improved and became significant uh, as a result of using WARP3 PLS regression. Again, the reason for this is that the real relationships between the variables that are nonlinear were not being picked up through the linear PLS regression. I will also now show side by side the path coefficients and p-values. And this is interesting because in the linear PLS regression, here I have the path coefficients calculated and below the p-values. And as you can see here, not all p-values are significant at the 0.05 level. Uh, this one is not, and this one is not. Now here on the right, with WARP3 PLS regression, all of the path coefficients turn out to be uh, significant at the 0.05 level, all of them. Now notice that the um, the, co the path coefficients, they don't all become larger with uh, warped uh, PLS regression. Uh, th some of them go down. For example, this one, 0.179 with warped regression, was actually 0 0.180 in linear regression. This one here, 0 0.178, also went down. Uh, and this one here uh, on the right, uh, on the left, I'm sorry, was higher. This means, and, and the reason for this, is that a war PLS regression does not simply uh, artificially inflate path coefficients. Path coefficients tend to go up because warp 3 PLS regression 
is a finding the actual, the real relationships between latent variables, which is not uh, obtained through a linear regression uh, algorithm unless uh, the relationship is actually linear. And uh, most relationships in nature, including relationships between variables in business studies, uh, sociology studies, uh, econo economics, and other disciplines are nonlinear.